The preparation for this one is pretty long because you actually have to go through and explain to the children how it's different to have something come out from a computer's point of view versus their point of view. So it's definitely helpful if they understand how Dice Race works, but if they don't, you can use something like a Magic 8-Ball or Yahtzee or something else that they've played. Talk about how it looks from their point of view, and then talk about how it looks for a computer to present that to them. We've been talking about algorithms, and we've been talking about how you can make a list of steps to explain a task. And in the past, we've been talking about how we can make instructions to describe things that we do every day, but we're gonna change it up a little bit. You guys are getting older, and it's time to start thinking about how you can describe tasks from the other side. So instead of describing what we see when we play a game, then we can start describing what the computer needs to show us. And I'm gonna show you how it's different. Are you ready? Okay, so I'm gonna give you two each a dice and we're gonna have a dice race, okay? So you'll be number one and you'll be number two and we are gonna move forward a certain amount based on what you roll. We're gonna have three rolls and whoever gets the farthest at the end of those three rolls wins, all right? So let's go, roll number one. They win the glory of being the farthest in the dice race game. I'm okay with that. Okay, go. Four. Okay, go. <laughs> Five. Oh, Whoa. Okay, roll number two. Okay, you go first. And final roll, roll number three. Two. Six. Whoa. Okay. So you see in the dice race game, number one was the winner. So now you know how to play the dice race game. Yeah? Now I need us to think of our list of steps that it takes to play that game. Because understanding how to play is one thing, but being able to explain it step by step to someone else is another thing, right? So if we're gonna play the dice race game, what's the first thing we need to do? Yes. Make sure that there's a player one, a player two. Okay, so you have player one and player two, and what's the score at the beginning? Zero, zero. Zero, zero. So each of them, your score is zero. So then what do you do? Yeah. You roll um, the die once and then you get however many points. So then you roll the dice and then you add that to your score. And then what happens? Okay. So you do this. So the, does one person do all things three no. times? Why did, why did you one say does it, then all three times, times and then add up score? Okay. So player one does this, and then player two does this. And we do all that three times. And then what happens? Whoever has the highest score at the end wins. OK. Highest score wins. Does that sound about right? OK. So this would be the instructions if we are teaching someone else how to play, right? Mm -hmm. What do you suppose would be the instructions if we wanted a computer 
to help pretend like we were playing on the computer. So what things would be different? How would we, how would we describe that? OK. So yeah, what's the first thing we would need to do? Um, add like two players. I'll OK. Program two players. So you would need to initialize your two players. So you'd need to have two players. And again, you would have probably a variable called player1. And you would set that equal to 0, right? And you'd have a variable called player2, and you'd set that to 0, because that would be their score. OK, and now you're the computer. Now, if you're a person, you're rolling for your first turn. If you're a computer, is the computer going to go, oh, let me roll the dice? No. So you're going to have to program it to do something because you don't want it to give you the same number every time, right? So what number would we be showing? Something between? 1 and 6. OK. Number between 1 and 6. And how do you suppose we choose that number? Have you guys ever heard of a term called random numbers? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you could also just have it choose what? A random number. OK. So the first step, if you're the computer, is to set the scores to 0. Mm -hmm. The next thing we'll do is we will have it choose a number from 1 to 6 at random, because that's going to be the roll for that first player, right? And after it's rolled, what does the computer need to do? Um, tell the number, and then whatever that number is, add it to the player's. Right. So it's going to choose the number and it's going to show it here. And then here it's going to take player one score, right, which is P1. And it's going to, add, it's going to say the new score is whatever the old score was plus whatever this one was, right? Whatever. We'll call it. We'll call it roll, and we'll put the one to show that it's player one, right? So we'll have the old score plus roll, and that'll become the new score. Mm -hmm. All right, so now what do we do? It's now the second player's turn. Now what do we do? Program it so that it would do it once it added it up. OK, so once we've got player ones, now we have to do this again for? Player two. So we'll choose another random number. OK, so we've rolled again for player two. Now what do we do? Um, then you have the computer add the score to player two's score from zero to whatever player two got randomly assigned. OK. And then? Repeat three. Repeat three. So we have to repeat this. Whatever number of times we've decided that we're going to play in our program before we determine a winner. And after we're done repeating that, then what happens? Yes? The player with the highest score wins. OK. Now, how does the computer figure it out? Ooh, yeah? Whichever number is highest. So you have to figure out which number is highest, right? So in this case, uh, subtract P1. Oops. You're saying subtract P1 minus P2. And if it's a negative number, that means that this was bigger and P2 wins. So if it's negative, P2 wins. If it's positive, then this one was bigger. So player one wins. And if it's equal to zero, then what happened? Um, that's, um, a tie. Then it's a tie. OK, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to give you a real life dice race game to play. 
You guys are gonna play the game together. And when you're done playing the game, you're gonna write the algorithm down for it.